For more on these developments, let's turn to David Morey. He's advised world leaders from Russia to the United States. He focuses on issues involving the DPRK and national security. Let's start with Han Pong's story. The symbolism of what Pyongyang is doing, uh, dismantling this site as a good faith gesture. Well, it is symbolism, Mike. Uh, you use the right word. It's great reporting. It shows how quickly this issue, this relationship, it's almost a four-part relationship, China, South Korea, North Korea, the U.S., is moving. It's a symbolic gesture as opposed to substantive. There's a whole series of things that have to happen for stability to begin to find its way to the peninsula. It has to, you'd have to hypothetically, if the summit happens, I think it's going to get delayed, would be my prediction. Look for it maybe in uh, October in Singapore. That's the latest that I'm hearing on the ground. You'd have to start with a, a, a calming down of tensions, a freeze, a moratorium, and then phases, synchronous phases of denuclearization. It can't happen, it can't happen all at once. It's certainly not going to happen with a bunch of journalists covering it in North Korea. I watched this news conference earlier today with Mike Pompeo and Wang Yi, as I'm sure you did. Uh, and if you want to peel back the onion, Wang Yi sounding more positive about this summit yeah. than you're hearing from the United States, State saying he hopes it goes forward as scheduled. If you want peace, if you want history, now is the time. You're saying October, perhaps, uh, and the U.S. president yesterday all over the map said it might not happen, right. might happen later, could happen. Um, what's going on behind the scenes? Well, I think, Mike, on the North Korean side, they do want the summit, and there's reasons to want it. They want some economic success. The sanctions are biting very hard. And at some point, they've gotten to this nuclear level. They spent two decades to get to, the, to this nuclear level. They, uh, Kim Jong-un, in some ways, views this as his reward. You know, So there is a moment in history, and to Donald Trump's credit, he took advantage of that moment. The problem, Mike, is I think we've got an over-escalation of expectations. I think the president let the expectations jump. Anytime, anytime someone's suggesting that you or I should win a Nobel Peace Prize, we should be a little cautious, right? Number two, um, the Libya example that was brought up by the National Security Advisor is not helpful. That scares the Koreans, as does bringing the U.S. out of the, uh, the Iran deal. And then finally, as I said, this has to happen in phases. You can't go in and negotiate with the Koreans by saying, give us all your nuclear weapons, give them up, and then we'll normalize relations. It has to happen in phases. You have to, you have to date the North Koreans for a while and verify before you get married. Uh, you said he let the expectations escalate. He escalated them, didn't he? Correct. Yeah. I would say that he, I mean, look, in fairness to the president, it's a good question. Uh, you know, when you have an abrupt uh, sort of transformation, the, the Winter Olympics, the right South Korean president. We've ended up advising four South Korean presidents. I've been there 67 times. So I do, I think, understand the Korean side of this. It all sort of lined up with Kim Jong-un's desire to, to, to change and pivot the course of his nation. The president didn't tampen down the expectations. He did sort of escalate them, over-tweet them. You know, first it was Little Rocket Man, and then it was the Nobel Peace Prize. So you got to manage the expectations here. And I would make one more point, Mike. This cannot be done at the tactical level. There has to be a long-term strategy, which has not been the strength of this administration, in my personal opinion. There has to be a long-term strategy for this to work. It has to align with the, 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 the trade war or non-war with China. It has to align with how we deal with the Iran issue, how we deal with the South Korean and Asian relationship. A whole multitude of issues come into trying to keep the momentum going on this. My guess is it. I'd love to see it happen because I think it's better to happen than not happen. Uh, but I think it gets delayed. That would be my, my working guess as of today. And kind of a sticky situation for the Chinese foreign minister. He arrives here in Washington, and right as he gets here, the Defense Department disinvites China to RIMPAC. Uh, China's been there twice before, Nathan King mentioning that. The Pentagon says the issue is the South China Sea, but Wang Yi uh, looked at it differently today. He said, you know, look, there's military assets in Hawaii. We're doing the same thing. Does he have a point? You know, I don't understand this administration's policy toward China. Uh, there are legitimate trade issues that we should discuss with China. There are particularly on intellectual property and counterfeiting, for example. Uh, currency issues are really, a, to a large extent, a thing of the past. Uh, this administration has been very much stuck on that. And half the administration, the economic team, doesn't want anything close to a trade war with China. The other half, or at least third in the economic sense, does. So you've got a very divided administration. You've got very mixed signals. And that doesn't really help as you're trying to put together an historic summit, because the truth is China and the U.S. are much more aligned, in my judgment, on North Korea than people understand. As you pointed out, Mike, the North Koreans 
our, uh, the, the Chinese foreign minister is rooting for the summit. You know, who would have thought that? I think the Chinese don't want a complete breakthrough and a reunification that they have no control over, nor do they want a war on the Korean Peninsula. So something in that middle range that pulls this most dangerous part of the world away from the precipice, I think is what the Chinese are looking for. And, and that's part of what makes this an historic opportunity. Uh, I think, for the president and for the United States and North Korea. Let's hope they seize it. David Morey joining us from New York. We'll keep our eye on the calendar. You're saying October. We'll wait and see.